Check out this sweet tweet by Charlie McDowell. Dear girls above me, we can't eat Thai food anymore because supposedly all their good crops were destroyed in the tsunami. Good thing you love sushi. What's up, heads? I'm Nate Miller. Thanks for joining us today for another episode of WebEd. The lineup for today's show includes the 61.com, npr.org, Digo, and patterncooler.com. Let's get to the 61. The 61.com is not your average social site. On the 61, new artists make music and listeners decide what's good. The site is named after Highway 61, a U.S. route that runs along the Mississippi River and marks the origin of American music culture. Muddy Waters, Bob Dylan, and B.B. King rode the 61. Elvis grew up in the housing projects along it. Highway 61 was the road by which people left their homes to take their music to the world. Like other social networking sites, it is free to create an account. After you create an account, you can check out everything the 61 has to offer. First of all, the 61 is a music adventure. Remember that the site is all about listeners deciding what music is good. So if you have a lot of Nickelback and Black Eyed Peas in your iTunes, you could probably benefit from this site. So the way the site creates the incentive for users to rate music and listen to a lot of it is by making it a game or an adventure. The menu bar at the top right is a permanent fixture on the site and you see there is a quest button, popular button, and explore button. By clicking on the quest button, you can see the quests laid out before you to earn reputation points and hearts. Once a quest is completed, you are rewarded with reputation points and hearts. It's kind of like Zelda, but you'll get made fun of much less for playing it. You can see how many hearts and experience points you have by looking at the bar in the top left hand corner. This bar has your username and picture how many plays you have accumulated and how many hearts you have, your reputation points, and the green bar represents your progress to the next level. The higher the level, the more reputation points and hearts you get when you log on each day. Let's teach you how to use a heart. Users use hearts to reward artists for their songs. To hear a song, all you have to do is scroll over the heart on the left of the page, and that bar will pop out. From there, you have the option to heart a song, comment on it, share it on Facebook or Twitter or email, and if it's available, you can download it. You can only heart a song after you've listened to it for a minute, and you can only heart a song to match your user level. So this user can only heart a song 11 times because this user is a level 11. If you run out of hearts, all you have to do is click on the explore button, then the open mic button, and for every song you listen to on the open mic, you can earn a heart. The 61 allows users to create playlists like 8Tracks or Last.fm. To access a playlist, all you have to do is click on your username. Once you're on your profile page, you can select playlists and listen to them on your page. You can also check out the history of songs you have listened to or look at your achievements as a user. To add a song to the playlist you have created, all you have to do is find a song that you like and move over the plus sign at the top of the screen. From there, you can select which list you want in the song to be in. You can have a song in multiple playlists if you want. The last thing we're going to look at is the Creative Commons page. The Creative Commons page is a place where artists place their music that is not all rights reserved, but under the Creative Commons licensing. Creative Commons licenses provide simple, standardized alternatives to the all rights reserved paradigm of traditional copyright and was basically made to fit anyone's uses for publishing online. Go to creativecommons.org for more information about Creative Commons licensing. All in all, the 61.com is a pretty cool site to find new music and share it with your friends and family. Plus, the layout's pretty sweet. Stay tuned, because right after the break, we're going to check out the Daily Generator. party with your friends, you go out to the recycling bin and put your pizza boxes in there, right? Wrong. You can't recycle pizza boxes. Mm -hmm. 
What's up, HC? Welcome back to Webhead. I'm Nathan Miller, and it's time to check out our daily generator. You don't want it in the gauntlet. I'ma bring pain to those who want it. I come for your gold. PatternCooler.com is a place where you can create cool background patterns for free. For sites like Twitter and MySpace, it allows users to create different backgrounds. So this is an easy way for you to easily create a super cool background image for your profile or website. It's probably how your little sister makes her Justin Bieber backgrounds. Let's make a background image for Webhead's Twitter page. By clicking on the editor link at the top, you'll be brought to the editing section of the site. From there, all you need to do is select a pattern. The editor will open the pattern and give you options to change the colors. You can shuffle the colors that you have already by checking the current colors box and clicking the shuffle colors button. Or select colors at random by clicking the random button and shuffle the colors again. You can also choose the colors you use for the pattern by clicking custom palette and adjusting the colors as you want. After you have the pattern all worked out the way you'd like it, click on the preview resize and download button. On this page you can download the PNG for free or pay for other file types. At the same time, you can resize the image from 25% view all the way to 200% view. Once you're satisfied, download the image and do whatever you want with it. Stay tuned because right after the break, we'll look at npr.org. How cool is that juggling? If you would like to juggle with those same cups, or use any of the dishes of the Plate Project at your next event, contact a Seek member. The dishes on the Plate Project are available free of charge. The Plate Project. These are cups. Welcome back to Webhead, I'm Nathan Miller. Let's check out the news source. National Public Radio is mostly known for its broadcast news, but online it's pretty powerful as well. NPR.org is a great way to stay up to date with what's happening around the country and world. It has great multimedia characteristics like photos and audio and even the occasional video. Let's go through the site. At the top of the page, you'll see the navigation links, home, news, arts and life, music, Programs, Listen, Hourly News, and Podcasts. The homepage will take you to the main page with the top stories of the day in print and audio. When you click on the News button, it takes you to a similarly looking page, but you have the choice of news interest areas in red at the top, with U.S., World, Opinion, Politics, Investigations, Business, Technology, science, health, and sports. Let's check out the arts and life page now. Here we see the same setup as the news page, but with more entertainment types of things. Things like movie reviews, book reviews, pop culture, and food reviews can be found in the arts and life page, as is the theme throughout the site. Audio dominates the stories here. When you click on the music button, it will take you to the music page. The music page is like a whole different site in itself. You can browse artists and songs and listen to music while checking out videos and interviews of your favorite artists and see what's going on with your favorite genre. As I said earlier, NPR is known for its radio presence, for the most part. So when you click on the programs button, you can check out their audio news or special programs. Similarly, the Listen button will give you a news option, specialty show, or the 24-hour NPR stream. Hourly News is just that, and the Podcast button will take you to the NPR podcast page where you can find national podcasts like Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, or a show produced by a station that you listen to in your area. NPR.org is a great source for hard news and feature stories. Remember that audio is the way to go on there. Just remember that when you're on a connection that does not have a pretty good bandwidth. That's all for the news source. After the break, we previewed the bookmarking site, Digo. This is Webhead.
these bags are ugly and annoying. I'd rather use my reusable bag. Welcome back to Webhead. It's time to check out Digo. We're previewing Digo because it was suggested by follower Peter Gorgeous. You can follow Peter on Twitter at PeteCCSB. The name Digo is pretty funky, but it stands for Digest of Internet Information Groups and Other Stuff. Digo is different from other bookmarking sites because it's two services in one. On one hand, it's a research tool, and at the same time, it's a social content site. Digo calls itself a social information network because, though Digo provides a rich set of social networking features, Digo is quite different from typical social networks in that it's solely about social networking through knowledge share. Digo is popular with libraries and schools because it allows a user to do things that they were previously only able to do on paper, such as highlight portions of web pages and clip and share, or you can annotate a web page with sticky notes that remain there every time you visit the site, as long as you are a Digo user. Highlighted paragraphs, sticky notes, and the original URL are saved on Digo servers, creating your personal digest of the web, your own collection of highlights from the web. To learn more about Digo, check out the video tutorials on digo.com slash learn underscore more. Now while you're sitting there watching on TV or online, you should consider following these people on Twitter. Sockington is Jason Scott's cat. Sockington tweets his opinions about what goes on around his house and his encounters with the neighborhood squirrels. This cute, hilarious cat has a website for his Sox Army as well as www.sockington.org. Of course, the only thing cuter than a cat tweeting would be any kind of dog, but it's still pretty adorable nonetheless. Charlie McDowell. Charlie McDowell tweets about the girls that live above him. He addresses them as gam girls above me. Those girls must make a lot of noise because he pulls some, some pretty classic quotes from their conversations like, we can't eat Thai food anymore because supposedly all their good crops were destroyed in the tsunami. You should also check out Uber Humor. Uber Humor is a collection of the funniest and best viral images on the web updated every hour. They bring you images like this one. And that's what I call a facial on the beach. Make sure you follow Webhead on Twitter as well, at HC Webhead. You can suggest other people or organizations to follow and give us more websites to review like Peter Gorgeous did for this episode. Until next time, I'm Nathan Miller. Adios, Hastings.